there's a bit of voodoo that surrounds asynchronous application development, and you might have heard about this among your developer friends or in YouTube tutorials. And that is that somehow, magically, async applications are super fast. The truth is that applications written in async fashion are not really faster, but they are more efficient. Let's look at an example, specifically with one of the popular web servers for Python called Gunicorn. When you start Gunicorn, you can specify how many workers you will spawn. Typically, you can have three or four workers per server. Each worker handles one HTTP request at a time, processes it, and returns it back to the caller, doing this over and over. Within each request, there are times when the processor is working and other times it's asleep, just waiting for a database request to complete or an external API request to be returned. When the request is completed, the response is sent back and the next request is taken. But here's the problem. Let's say that you have three concurrent users visiting your site with three workers, and it takes 10 seconds for each request to fully complete. That means that each additional user visiting could be waiting as much as 10 seconds just to even get started with the request. So how do you typically scale these applications? By adding web servers on the front layer. But this is costly and inefficient, as each request spends a lot of time asleep waiting for data to be returned so that it can finish its request. This is where asynchronous applications come in. Async libraries can spawn hundreds or even thousands of concurrent pseudo-threads, which in async parlance are called coroutines. These coroutines are supervised by a master scheduler called the event loop. A coroutine A is started when a request comes in, but when it hits its first I.O. point, it is suspended like a bear hibernating the winter and the loop is freed to take a new request and start a new coroutine B. When the data is delivered to coroutine A, it is resumed whenever coroutine B is suspended. At this point, coroutine A is completed, so the loop is free to take the next request, which spawns coroutine C. Notice that coroutines never work in parallel. This is a major misconception of async programming. Coroutines work concurrently, and it's important to understand that they need to have waiting times for them to work together. Otherwise, a coroutine that never sleeps could take over the whole loop. With this methodology, each server is now able to fulfill thousands of requests, versus the handful or tens of requests that it would be able to handle if our code was synchronous. A good real-world example of sync versus async applications is the waiter and cook of a busy restaurant. Let's say we start with a single process waiter that operates synchronously. When a new customer comes in, he goes to their table and takes their order. The first customer orders a salad. The waiter goes to the kitchen and places the order to the cook for the customer's salad. He waits until it's ready, and since it's a salad, it takes little time to deliver the dish back to the customer. But then a new customer enters the restaurant. The waiter writes his order. He wants pasta. Pasta is a bit more complicated, so he knows it will take longer to prepare. But he goes to the cook and places the order for the pasta and waits for 10 minutes until the pasta is ready. Meanwhile, the first customer wants to order his main course after his salad, and a third customer just came in. The waiter continues in the kitchen until the pasta is ready to be taken to the second customer, and he rushes to the third customer. Bad news. The third customer wants lobster, and that takes 30 minutes to prepare. He runs to the kitchen and stays there for 30 whole minutes while the first two customers are losing all their patience to place their new orders. You can see how this story ends badly for that restaurant's business. But on the other side of the street, a new restaurant opens with a highly efficient, asynchronous waiter. When the first customer comes in and orders the salad, he goes to the kitchen and places the order for the cook. 
but instead of waiting for the salad to be ready, he goes back to the dining area to take care of the new customer that just sat down. He takes his pasta order and takes it to the kitchen, picks up the salad and delivers it to the first customer, and then goes to greet the third customer and starts taking his order. You can see how much more efficient the second waiter is, and how he would be able to accommodate much more concurrent customers than the first synchronous waiter. So the bottom line of the story, async programming doesn't make code run faster per se, but it does make code run more efficiently and will allow you to serve many more requests per server. Let's now go ahead and code the waiter and cook example using our first async program. 